don't look now, but today's the last day of June. And this hellish first half of the month is nearly finally over. And it's ending a whole lot better than it started. Brewers get the two-game sweep in Tampa Bay. Let's talk about a crazy finale at the drop. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning. It is Thursday, June 30th. Yes, indeed, the final day of the sixth month of the year. I'm Dominic Catronio. This is Locked On Brewers, your only daily podcast dedicated to the Brew Crew all season long. We post episodes most Monday through Friday right here, first thing in the morning for your first listen of the day. If you haven't already, hit subscribe on YouTube, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, follow us on Twitter at Locked On Brewers, or myself at Dom underscore Catronio. Right now, we are bringing you everything you need to know about a two-game sweep in Tampa Bay. If you missed yesterday's episode, go back and click. We talk about Game 1. This is going to be centered on Game 2, overarching stuff. I'm the statistician for Valley Sports Wisconsin, so watch that four-hour slog of a game, but the Brewers ended up on top somehow. Thanks to some late heroics yet again with the long ball. Every run, all five runs were scored via home run for the Brewers in this game yesterday as they win both games in the drop. And remember, we mentioned this in yesterday's pod, that the Brewers were the first team in two years to win an interleague game at Tampa Bay, and now they just take both games that they have down in St. Petersburg. So impressive stuff for Craig Council's club right now as they get ready to close out the month of June. I tease this In the very beginning of the pod, we know how brutal the first few days of this month were. It it was awful. They started out 3-11 and in the first 14 games of June. Awful. And, you know, sky was falling, eight-game losing streak. It was no fun to be around the team. Since that 3-11 and start to the month, they're now 9-3 and since. So, a chance to go 10-3 and today against the Pittsburgh Pirates, the first of four at PNC Park. And obviously, it won't be a 500 month. It'll be, if they win tonight, it'll be a 13-14 and month. But given you lost 11 of the first 14 games of the month, and now we'll have an opportunity to win 12 of the last 15, that's a heck of a rebound for the Brewers and exactly what they needed to gain their confidence back as they are now heading a stretch of 10 straight games against non-playoff contending opponents. They've got these four with the Pirates over the weekend, back home for 4th of July, three games with the Cubs, three games at home with the Pirates, and then they got a tough stretch road trip to close out the first half. Yeah, we're almost done with the first half, y'all. Two games in Minnesota and then four games in San Francisco to close out the first half of the season leading into the All-Star break. Brewers tonight will be game number 78. They are currently rolling in at 44 and 33. 11 games over, 500. Just for kicks and giggles, you want to look back to 2021. What were they after game 77 last year? 44 and 33. This is when they got hot last year. This is when they went on that awesome winning streak in a similar fashion of the schedule. They had a good stretch of teams that were not playoff teams facing Colorado, Arizona, Colorado again, the Cubs, and then the Pirates. This was also, this time last year was that crazy three-game sweep over the Cubs at home at the end of June. Remember, you know, the seven runs in the first, and they come back with 15 unanswered. The 10-run seventh inning or eighth inning, I think it was, against the Cubs. This was this time of year last year, right when they were getting hot. They were 40 and 33 at the start of the stretch. Then they end up going uh, 11 consecutive wins, 51 and 33. And they never looked back from there. That's when they really took hold of the Central Division. When they started that winning streak last year, they were tied for first with the Cincinnati Reds. And then they go on the monster run. They end up eight games up at the end of the streak. And then it never got closer than four games until the very, very end of the year when the Cardinals were making it close to make it five games on the last day of the year, but it was already clinched by then. The Brewers are hitting their stride now. This is the time that you want to bring momentum to the All-Star break to really figure out what you have. And the main component of why they're getting hot is they're getting healthier. And then they took a blow to that yesterday. Jonathan Davis 
had the catch of the year, regardless of Brewers or, you know, just this month. That might have been the catch of the year in baseball. Broke initially in and to his right, then realized the ball was over his head on a screaming liner from Randy Rosarena. Lays out, diving headfirst into the wall in center field. Looked like he cracked his neck, landing into the wall. Makes an incredible over-the-shoulder diving catch. Ends up coming out of the game two innings later, but he stayed in at the moment. He was in a ton of pain. Sounds like everything is okay structurally. He's going to be sore this morning, don't get me wrong. What an incredible play that really set the tone for this game for the Brewers. There are other moments that I really believe set the tone in this 5-3 to three win, but what an incredible catch. And if you're wondering about the stat cast numbers on that play, they weren't that crazy impressive only because he did misread it for a split second. But when I say misread, don't act like I'm sitting here saying, oh, he, he's not that good of a center fielder. He should have made that play standing up. Absolutely not. Ask any center fielder, what is the hardest ball to judge? The line drive with no height straight at you. And that's exactly what that ball was to Jonathan Davis. Playing in a ballpark he hasn't played in since 2020. Really hard to judge a ball in Tampa Bay, of course, with the weird lighting and the, and the odd roof and everything. Rose ran to hit that ball hard, 105 miles an hour off the bat. He took an instinct read off to his right. That's what you have to do in the big leagues because there was no times. And then he was able to adjust his route with his speed, making an incredible diving catch. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and it's on our uh, on our Twitter account as well at the uh, at Locked On Brewers. And it's been just amazing to see the response to this catch. See it blow up all over social media. I've seen it in a few different places now. Absolutely incredible play by Jonathan Davis to rob a, a Rose Arena. Just absolutely bonkers stuff in the bottom of the second inning. Let's get to the game recap here in just a second. I just want to jump onto a quick soapbox there, tell you about last season, tell you about how this team is starting to hit its stride. Here's a, a, a big thought too as we head to this 10-game stretch against non-contending teams. Don't sit here and say, oh, they, they need to go 10-0. and It's not going to happen. It'd be cool if it happens. Don't get me wrong. I, I would ex put the expectation, the goal, you know, take three out of four in Pittsburgh. You have to take two out of three from the Cubs. You should be sweeping the Cubs and then sweep the Pirates at home. If you just take three out of four from Pittsburgh, two out of three from the uh, the Cubs here at home, and then you take three more. That would be an eight and two 10 game stretch. That's a very lofty goal. So I'll go ahead and put it at a seven and three goal. Okay, seven and three. I'd be happy with that because you're a better team on paper than all three of these next opponents. Granted, one of them twice. Eight and two would be the lofty expectation. The stretch goal. Win all three series is the, is the goal. Definitely not lose any series, but hey, crazy things have happened. Offense starting to click in the right direction. Let's see what happened with the pitching. We do have to talk about Eric Lauer in this episode. Before we go any further, I want to tell you about our friends at LinkedIn. If you are a small business owner and you're trying to find hires this summer, they are making it easier than ever to grow your team at LinkedIn Jobs. They want to help you find the right people you want to interview faster and for free. That's right. You can create a free job post in minutes to reach your network and beyond. It's the largest professional network in the world. Over 810 million people are on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. You're probably on LinkedIn. You know the drill. You can add your job on LinkedIn Jobs and use the purple hashtag hiring frame. That way your LinkedIn profile can see that you're hiring and you can spread the word across your network that you are looking for some creative, amazing people to help your team. There are simple tools, there's screening questions, there's easy making it easier to focus on the candidates you want to talk to with the right skills and experience to prioritize who you want to interview and ultimately hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So they want to help you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know nearly 40 million job seekers are on LinkedIn every single week? Post your job for free at LinkedIn jobs at LinkedIn.com slash Locked on MLB. One more time. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. 
5-3, victory. This was a topsy-turvy game. It was a four-hour game. Had a little bit of everything. It had catwalk home runs. Had the epic play by Jonathan Davis. Had multiple home runs from Rowdy Telez. Had an umpire injured. We hope everything's okay uh, in that scary moment with the concussion is what it looked like for David Rackley. He had to leave the game in the eighth inning. Uh, that was no fun, to say the least, to watch that happen on a clean foul ball right off his face mask. Also, the Brewers had their A bullpen available in back-to-back days despite a 12-hour turnaround. What a day for the Brewers to win this game by a final of 5-3. to three. They got on the board first in the second inning. Brewers, as we mentioned, used the long ball quite a bit in this one. In the second inning, it was a Rowdy Telez home run to center field, a, a shot to center that just scraped off the top of the wall, 414 feet. He gets his 14th home run of the year, but he wouldn't be done. Later on in the game, it's still 1-0 Brewers into the bottom of the fourth inning now. Eric Lauer still on the mound, facing the top half of the order. Isak Paredes ends up popping out to lead off the inning. A Rosarana draws a one-out walk. Then a Harold Ramirez single the other way into right field, puts runners on first and second. A Rosarana and Ramirez do a double steal to take the double play out of play with G-Man Choi at the plate. Choi strikes out swinging. Shout-out to the old friend G-Man Choi. Then Taylor Walls... It's a little blooper into shallow right. And Jace Peterson, I believe, would tell you he should have made that play. This ball drops in front of Jace Peterson and allows two runs to score and to give the Rays the lead. Eric Lauer thought he made a good enough pitch to get out of that frame. Everything kind of snowballed from there in the fifth inning. But the big reason Jace was in the game, Jace didn't originally start this game. He had to go into right field because Jonathan Davis was eventually removed after crashing into the wall in center field. Tyrone had to move from right to center and to put Jace into right. And now it's coming to fruition, exactly what I talked about 12 days ago when the Brewers DFA'd Lorenzo Cain. The lack of outfield depth, especially now with Hunter Renfro being gone, is going to be excused. Remember, at the time, Hunter Renfro was on the active roster 12 days ago when Lorenzo Cain was DFA'd. You had just enough space to get things done. Then Jonathan Davis arrives to give more depth in center field for Tyrone. And now you've got Hunter Renfro on the shelf. Who knows how long Jonathan Davis may need to take a few days off. Hopefully it's not an IL stint for him. But you only have currently, tonight, one active 100% center fielder, and that's Tyrone Taylor. And then in right field, you'll have to continue playing Jace Peterson and then putting Christian Yelich in left or Andrew McCutcheon in left because as talented as those guys are with the bat, Kutch is a little better defensively than Yelich, but you can't put either one of those guys in right field. They're in a conundrum in the outfield. So when Hunter Renfro comes back, that should help stabilize things, and let's hope that Jonathan Davis isn't seriously injured. So that big blooper was going to rain large in this game. So Brewers now trail 2-1, to but they avoided the shutdown inning in the top of the fifth inning. The Rays went with an opener approach, kept churning out arms. It would basically be two innings and you're out, two innings and you're out. Sean Sean Armstrong was making his first appearance uh, in this series in the fifth inning. He gets two quick outs. And then do not forget about Andrew McCutcheon drawing an epic nine-pitch walk to extend that top of the fifth inning. Fouled off multiple pitches after a sleepy start to the inning. The first two outs were made on seven pitches. And then McCutcheon, a nine-pitch walk to extend the frame. And Luis Urias, he is getting hot, folks. Urias hits a home run, his eighth of the year, a deep shot to left center that actually hits off the C-ring on the catwalks there at Tropicana Field. It was a no-doubt blast. StatCast had it as a home run out at all 30 ballparks. Awesome swing for Show. Gives the Brewers a lead right back. It's now 3-2. So Eric Lauer's job is to go back out there for the bottom of the fifth and make sure the Brewers keep the lead. And this is the part where we start talking about Eric Lauer's struggles right now. Yes, he did not allow a home run in this game. Yes, he only allowed three earned runs in this game. But this offense on the other side was not 100%. He uh, he only had three strikeouts. He had two walks. He also yielded six hits against the, the Rays. Three earned runs, the third of which coming in the fifth inning. And both of his walks ended up coming into score against him. In the fifth inning, it starts off with a leadoff walk to the nine-hole hitter, Vidal Brujan. Just can't happen. That was on an eight-pitch at bat. So tip your cap to Brujan. He was up there taking, just trying to stay alive, not trying to get on base. He draws a walk. But Diaz ends up popping out. So one out, a ground ball, and you end the inning. Wander Franco, super talented young hotshot. You're going to hear a lot about Wander Franco for years to come. Hits a double down the third baseline. 
that grazes over the third base bag, there is not a doubt in my mind that is a 100% a fair ball. And while the Brewers argued it and contested it, you can understand the view that Craig Council had from third base thinking it was foul. Eric Lauer thought it was foul. But I feel like when he went back into the clubhouse and saw the video of it, he's probably going to realize, man, I looked like an idiot arguing as adamantly as I was that that was a foul ball. It was 100% a fair ball. It's a game of inches. It happened. But see Eric Lauer as frustrated as he was after giving up that double to now give up the lead. The rally's not over. Lauer ends up getting lifted. They bring in a pinch hitter to hit for Paredes. So Josh Lowe comes in. John Gustave is the counter. And Gustave ends the inning without further damage on seven pitches. Gets Lowe to strike out and a Rosarena to pop out to end the frame. So it's a 3-3 game through five innings. And now it's anyone's ball game. Obviously, the Rays are already using the bullpen. Brewers are now into their bullpen. We don't know exactly who's available at this point. Gustave does his job in the fifth. Hobie Milner then does his job to close out the sixth inning. And then we see Brad Boxberger warming up in the seventh. And Tim Dillard and I had this conversation inside the studio at Valley Sports Wisconsin yesterday. The fact that the Brewers, in a tie game, after using their A bullpen on Tuesday... On a quick turnaround day game, having Brad Boxberger ready to go in the seventh inning, sent a message saying, we are winning this game. It, as soon as we take a lead, you are done. That is what Craig Council was signaling to Kevin Cash on the other side with Brad Boxer warming up in the seventh inning saying, if you don't get Hobie Milner right now, you're not going to get one at all because you got Boxberger, Williams, and Hayter coming up. Even if this game goes to extras, you're not going to get one against these next three guys. So you better get one in the sixth. They didn't. However, the Brewers are struggling in the 6th and 7th innings as well. And then ultimately, after Brad Boxberger scores a, tosses a scoreless 7th, it was paid off in the 8th inning, solo homer by Rowdy Telez, his second homer of the game, his second multi-homer game in the last week. Of course, he had the Sunday multi-homer game against the Blue Jays, his 8th career multi-homer game. Awesome stuff. Rowdy, that's now 15 homers to tie for the team lead. And then just for good measure, the Brewers added one more in the ninth, solo homer from Jace Peterson. That made it 5-3. And Devin Williams left a couple guys stranded in the eighth inning. He, all three of his outs were via strikeout. He allowed a couple of walks, one to Rosarena and one to Choi. And then in the ninth inning, Josh Hader allowed a leadoff single to Francisco Mejia, then a walk to the nine-hole hitter Vidal Brujan again. And then locked it down from there against the top of the order. Diaz, Franco, low. He gets them all out on fly ball outs. Ends the game. Brewers take the sweep. Awesome. We're going to go into deeper detail in the final segment about what I'm taking away from this game. Who's hot, who's not. And then briefly preview these Pittsburgh Pirates. But what a win. Four hours later, you look, you're, you're gassed after those games. But when you win it, Everything's forgiven. Everything is forgiven. Everything is A-OK -okay when you win those type of absolute thrillers like the Brewers did against a very good team in the Tampa Bay Rays. Before we go any further, I want to tell you about one of our newest sponsors, the Sports Card Investor app. If you're somebody that's a casual card collector or maybe you're all in on it, side hustle, investment opportunity, you can now enter the world of trading sports cards reimagined with the Sports Card Investor app. It's the hobby's most powerful resource. You can quickly check the value of all your favorite cards. You can even find great deals that are available on eBay, and you can profit from the hobby that you love. It's completely free on the Google Play and Apple App Stores. The Sports Card Investor app is a must-have for any baseball fan or any sports fan. Over 600,000 cards are available from every single sport. You can check the values on a 7-day and a 30-day chart as well to see What's hot? What's working? What are folks buying? And you can find the best prices and buy directly through the app with the eBay deals feature. So download the Sports Car Investor app today. Available for free in the Google Play and Apple App Stores. Or you can go to sportscardinvestor.com slash locked on. We're also brought to you by, of course, Bet Online, your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. Look, we are full swing Baseball only season, if you know what I mean. This is the only pro sport happening right now in in the land. And if you're a PGA golf fan like me, you got that going on. We're not going to talk about live right now. But when you look at this beautiful next couple of months, you know, Fourth of July is next week. Baseball's big day. Learning about you know the the trade deadlines and the trade rumors coming up, you can see all of this 
at Bet Online. In fact, they got new odds up there right now. Aaron Judge hit a home run yesterday. Is Aaron Judge going to break Roger Maris's team home run record of 61? Of course, Roger Maris hit 61 homers in 1961. Right now, it's plus 400 if he breaks it. So a hundred dollar bet, you're going to yield 400. No, obviously the favorite. You got to lay down 700 in order to win 100. Minus 700 odds there. You can find all this stuff at BetOnline.net, where the game starts. Let's talk about who's hot, who's not. I talked briefly about Christian Yelich yesterday, how well it's been going for him in the leadoff spot. It's getting better. And I found this stat earlier today that Yelich now has a 402 on base percentage, which going into yesterday, it was 398. Gets on base a couple more times yesterday. Uh, his 402 on base is currently second best in all of baseball as far as leadoff hitters since he took over the job. So just since June 6th. As far or June eighth, I beg your pardon. Among league off hitters in baseball with at least sixty plate appearances, Yelich is second in on base percentage. This role is allowing him to thrive, not being put pressure on to hit home runs all the time. You can hit a gapper, he can steal bases. If this is what's going to help Yelich and the Brewers be successful, I'm all for it because that allows runners to be on base for the guys like Adamas, for the guys like Telez, for the guys like McCutcheon, and when Renfro comes back, I like that plan a lot. And then doubles with Yelich on first can turn into RBIs with his speed. This could really work out well for the Brewers right now. I really like what I'm seeing there. Luis Arias, just mentioned, he's getting hot. He's got hits in five of his last eight games, including three multi-hit games over this stretch. Hits another home run yesterday. No doubt blast. We're starting to see him more go gap to gap as well. Not just dead pull hitter anymore. Encouraging sign from Weicho right now. Another two-homer game from Roddy Telez. Briefly mentioned that as well, that he's really rolling. I think Willie put a little more pressure on himself than he wanted after seeing what uh, Roddy Telez just did against his former club. Uh, Rowdy, or excuse me, Willie went 0 for 5 yesterday and uh, also didn't do much in Tuesday's game against Tampa Bay. He went 1 for 3 with a walk and a strikeout in that one. He had the single in the first, but that was it. Ends up going 1 for 8 in his former ballpark. But hey, doesn't have to take another AB there unless it's the World Series. So he's very happy to be leaving the tough sight lines for him at the trot. Wonder what he's going to do in Pittsburgh. And here's a note that I love. The Brewers are now tied for the MLB lead for most consecutive games with a homer. 13 straight games they've hit a home run. Yeah, the Yankees haven't even done that. The Marlins are the only other team to have a 13 straight homer streak. 14, of course, would be the longest. The longest ever for the Brewers was back in 2008. Uh, in that season, they had 20 straight games with the home run. The reason why I bring it up, you're now entering a notorious pitcher's ballpark. So if this streak continues to make it, you know, even 14, 15, 16, whatever it may end up at, to do it at Pittsburgh, at PNC Park, will be awfully impressive. But to get it to 13 games, awesome. Keep on rolling with the swings. Swing big, swing hard in case you hit it. Brewers, we've talked about the fact that they need to vary up their offense. They still aren't quite doing that as far as driving in runners with scoring position, not just relying on the home run ball. But when they're coming plentiful like they are right now, you don't really notice the fact that they haven't been hitting well with runners in scoring position as of late. Brewers are now third in baseball and home runs hit. Uh, that's in all of baseball, second in the National League with 105. The Astros nipping at their heels with 102. Leader, of course, is the Bronx Bombers with 126. Let's get to the bad stuff. Eric Lauer, it's beyond a slump now. It's a downward trend that he needs to fix as soon as possible. You look at his numbers with his fastballs, four-seamers and cutters. The average has gone up every month. The strikeout rate has gone down every month. The slugging rate has gone up every month. Not exciting stuff to see from Eric Lauer. Now, he pitched into the fifth inning, which you would like to see a little more length out of him. He only had three whiffs on fastballs between the four-seamer and the cutter. He had five whiffs on his breaking ball. If that means he needs to start relying a little more on his breaking ball as opposed to his fastballs like he normally does, maybe that's the adjustment that needs to be made. And the other thing that maybe needs to be made too is understanding he should be living maybe toward the bottom of the zone with the breaking stuff that will help that those fastballs and cutters elevate Furthermore, it, and I sit here saying like it's so easy, it's not that easy because we saw that formula working for him in April but when he loses command and he's catching too much in the middle of play, we see him get knocked around a little bit like we've seen these last few games. I'm officially nearing the worry button 
for Eric Lauer just because both him and Hauser have not given you any consistency this season. If you're consistently getting six innings and four runs, you can live with that. But Lauer has been up and down. You don't know which guy you're going to get. He had four walks in a start against the Nationals, gave up three homers in that game. Uh, in this one, he only had one walk. He also had, or excuse me, he had two walks, but he only had three strikeouts. Uh, he hasn't had more than six strikeouts in the month of June in a single game, whereas he did that three times in May, and he did it twice in April. If he needs to learn how to get guys out without the strikeout, let's do it. Let's pitch the contact. Let's try to get weak contact because there's been a lot of loud contact against Eric Lauer as of late. In fact, his ERA has risen to over four now. It's 4.02, whereas at the start of May, it was 1.82. Not exciting stuff from Eric Lauer. Really want to see him right the ship moving forward. How about the bullpen? Devin Williams, three more strikeouts for him. He is an all-star. All-star, all-star, all-star. It's going to be hard. Brewers fans, you got to shout it from the rooftops, man. I'm going to shout it from the rooftops. Will Salmon wrote a great piece about the fact that Devin Williams should be an all-star. His teammates believe he should be an all-star. He believes he should be an all-star. Three more strikeouts. Leaves two guys stranded. He has the best pitch in baseball with his changeup. Let's put it on center stage at Dodger Stadium. Show the world how nasty this dude is. And that the Brewers are for real with their Devin Williams in the eighth, Josh Hader in the ninth. Oh, ho-hum, Josh Hader, another save. His 24th of the season. That leads the bigs right now. And for Josh Hader, he continues to climb toward uh, Dan Plezak's all-time franchise record of saves. Dan Plezak's record is 133. Hader is now at 120, so he's 13 away from tying it, 14 from passing it. I mean, at this rate, he's going to pass it at some point in August. And for Hader, well-deserved. He's the best closer in baseball, and he can officially put the feather in his cap as the best closer in Brewers history once he passes Dan Plezak. Some notes on on that for the bullpen. Quickly, let's talk about the Pirates. Uh, The Brewers and the Pirates, they haven't seen each other for quite a while now as the Brewers get ready to take on their central foes. It'll be their second trip to PNC Park this year. They got one more coming up later in the season. But the Pirates, they got 6.05 tomorrow, or 6.05 tonight, 6.05 tomorrow, 3.05 on Saturday, and 12.35 on Sunday. The Pirates yesterday had a crazy game from Brian Reynolds. They just held on 8-7 to seven over the Nationals. Brian Reynolds, a three-homer game for him. He is getting white hot right now. They are now 30-45 and 45 this season are the Pirates as the Brewers are undefeated against Pittsburgh so far this season. They would like to keep it that way despite starting a four-game series at their spot. 6-0 and against the Pirates, 7-2 and against the Reds. That's been a big reason why the Brewers are currently 11 games over 500. We only know the pitching matchups for two of the games, the first two games. Tonight, Adrian Hauser, still trying to get back on track. 4-8 and record, 4.50 ERA. Going up against JT Brubaker, he is 1-7 with a 4.14 ERA. Again, a 6.05 first pitch tonight. Coverage begins at 5.30 on Valley Sports Wisconsin. Hope you tune in. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow, Corbin Burns makes his next appearance after going into the eighth inning against the Blue Jays. He is 6-4, and four, a 2.41 ERA. Going up against a young prospect in Roansi Contreras. He's already pitched against the Brewers this year. 2-1, and one, a 2.76 ERA in a little over 40 innings so far this year for Contreras. TBD for Saturday against the Pirates or both teams. Brewers are hoping that could be Aaron Ashby. They're also TBD for Sunday. That could be Jason Alexander. And then you save Brandon Woodruff for the 4th of July against the Cubs. That certainly could happen. Uh, but then we do know the Pirates will be starting Jose Quintana on Sunday in the finale of that series. Brewers have not seen the Pirates since the end of April. And that was starting a little mini five-game winning streak for the Brewers. In fact, they were in a stretch that they won nine of ten games after sweeping the Pirates. Looking forward to seeing what they can do offensively since it will finally be warm in Pittsburgh now. And they go to Pittsburgh one more time later this season. That will be the first week of August, in fact. Will be, they'll be there on the day of the trade deadline. Keep that in mind. Fun episode. It's fun to talk about wins, even if they take four hours. Follow us on Twitter, at Locked On Brewers, for all your Brewers Pirates updates coming up. We'll be right back here tomorrow with a brand new episode. And I promise, the Jace Peterson in the hopper is dropping tonight. So that'll be available shortly before first pitch. Uh, again, my name is Dominic Catronio. 
Thank you for listening. We will see you next time. Until then, keep on swinging. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.